My name is Eduardo Garcia. I'm a professional chef, avid hunter, fisherman, and wild foods forager. A few years ago, I nearly lost my life doing what I love. Since then, I've doubled down on my mission to make food an integral part of every adventure. This is my hungry life. As we're coming down this road, you know, I have to get out and, and just get some feet on the ground. This is where we plan to hunt and where we plan to fish, and I know nothing about it. The dirt is ochre red. It's super, super dry and dusty. It's like nothing I've ever felt before. The wind is whipping. That smell of the ocean, nothing smells like it. It's quite clear that I am not in my comfort zone here. When you go somewhere new, you, you need an interpreter. And both of these guys are born in the Hawaiian Islands, and they know this place like the back of their hands. I've watched these guys surf, and I've watched them fish, and I've watched them hunt. I've got to make that connection, you know. We all share a common passion for bow hunting, and then we definitely share a common connection with food eating and harvesting. Healy does it from the water, and Dorian, he fishes too, but he does a lot of bow harvesting. I think one of the really cool things about Hawaii in general, most of the hunting here is sustenance hunting. People are hunting for meat. They're looking to fill their coolers, fill their freezers, and share with their family. And you know, and it's, it's 365 days a year you can go hunting here. I was out of my element completely on morning number one. You know, it was immediately out of the truck, go. We were crawling and just getting super, super low. I'd forgot about the red dirt. I had forgot about the white spots on the deer. A huge part of the reason I keep coming back to Lanai is Alec and Jason. They're just the best of the best, man. Everything I've learned about deer hunting is from those guys. Most of the guys I've come here to hunt with, they're always looking for big bucks. It was super refreshing to, to meet Eduardo because he was just like, man, I, I'm going to try and kill the first deer I see. I'm, I'm here to get meat. I'm a meat hunter. I want to like, be able to cook something really rad. So whatever's the best eating deer is the one I'm going to try and get. All I knew is my meals for the next 365 was 100 yards out, and I was closing the gap. Do you have a favorite cut? Oh, I like the back. The back is The color of this meat is so beautiful, man. Congrats, man. Thank you. Well, how was it? So good. I snuck up to 15 yards. He was bedded. I thought he was going to get up, but he didn't. So I drew back and kind of walked up a little bit more, and it was a really good shot. The, the axis deer is the best. It really is. And it's super easy to prepare in a lot of different ways. The meat's super mild. That's the goods right there, though. That's beautiful. It almost has like a sweetness to it. Look at that. That color, Shane? Yeah, right? Right, right, right there. Nice shooting, man. I think the big difference is like the variety of what they're eating. You know, they have a lot of different grasses. They, they literally eat fruit here. I've seen them like, like eating these guavas. The, all the ones that the deer can't reach on their hind legs. <laughs> are they getting Are they getting on their hind legs? Oh, yeah. yeah. They eat out of the trees. Yeah, they love it. So are they supposed to be soft? Yeah, just slightly soft. It's a fine line between perfectly ripe and overripe, you know? Exactly. On the I mainland, would. when you're foraging and picking, they say you should only grab 20% of what you find and leave enough for the animals and leave enough for natural propagation. I don't think you guys have to worry about that here. I think it's a, a non-issue. <laughs> moment we pick some guavas 
we harvested a couple axes deer. Tomorrow, I'm heading out with Healy, and I'm a little nervous about jumping in the water, just seeing how my lungs are gonna do, and, but it'll all be good, and I'm there to experience it, and you know, even if I'm starfishing and floating on top <laughs> while Healy's down doing the deep stuff and coming up with food. It's interesting the way the world views Hawaii. It's one of those very kind of like stereotypical views as you would get of any place like this, I'd imagine. You know, Diamond Head, hotels, sunburnt tourists. But as soon as you get off of Oahu, it, it gets rural really fast. It's like being born, man. Yeah. <laughs> that urge to breathe, it's a diaphragmatic reflex. That reflex doesn't mean you actually need oxygen yet. So it's like figuring out and learning what alarm bells are true and which ones are just like alarm. overprotective alerts. parent alerts. I didn't know my dad until I was 13 and I'd only heard stories of this super radical free diver, fifth generation shark, lobster, conch fisherman. You know like folkloric heirloom stories right of how him and the fishing family in Mexico grew up and Every time I get near the water, not only do I connect with the 10 years I spent on the water fishing and diving and, and sort of the connection I made in my 20s with the ocean, but every time it brings me closer to the man that, you know, is my dad. Heading over. The underwater world is so much more lethal. We just, we can't exist there. And yet, guys like Mark and my dad have uh, honed a far more radical sense of hunting. You know, you can't bring your camel back down there and hydrate or your cliff bar. You've got you and your solid lungs and your head. It's about as pure as it gets. Ed got in the water and like, he just made it work. Like as soon as he got in the water, I seen him with a three prong. I was like, how would you load one of those? Cause you grab one end, grab and pull it up like that. And he's in there, like got it in a headlock and everything. And he got that thing cocked and he was shooting that fish. It was super impressive. Crack a couple cold ones and we're gonna create a rip, rip and vet of coals and fire and experiment and play with food. I think I just fillet the one half off that's clean on the uku. Yeah. And then you're saying what ceviche the rough side? I think so. Look at Jeez. the color of this. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything in a butcher shop that looks that fresh. Nice work, man. Good harvest. Thanks. Found this orange peel, clove, allspice, and organic cane sugar. Here. Shane, you want to wrap that? I got a whole stack of these tea leaves. Yes? Yeah. I'm gonna drop this puppy in, put it to bed. Some of the hunting guides, Jay and Alec, they're gonna come by the beach with their family. Uh, let's roast them, let's roast them whole and then we'll just crush them. Yeah. I've got a bulgogi back strap, we're gonna grill that. And then we got the little tenderloins. And I want to mix that up with some of the spicy pepper and see how it tastes like a tartar, just raw. Yeah. One more. Boom. Okay, and that looks great, man. A uhu and a uhu are both in there. For real. Thank you, Lord, for this um, food, Lord. This wonderful food and these people who came over here, God, I pray, Lord. Just bless them and pray, Lord. Safe trip cool. back home and thank you for this wonderful food. That's the food. That's the hand to prepare the food. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. So grateful. You. So grateful. Yeah. That one? All I've ever been is just a curious, curious, curious kid, you know? The reason I'm still curious is because I can't but be grateful every day that I'm breathing this in. Just experience life, be alive. I could fill it in with go bow hunt or go spearfish, but ultimately it's 
gratitude for life. All of this is bonus every day moving forward for the rest of my life is a bonus.